Watu wa Mombasa mtatui ya radhi e, manake Kiswahili sio mdomo chetu Ya manake kama bwana Korosi yo ya metoa gule pande ya Rift Valley So he may not actually translate exactly mambo ya mbao wanasema kwa, kis, kwa kiingereza Ili yaeze kusema kwa, kwa kizungu So nigependa kumuita uh, representative ambaye ametoka Auditor General's Office ambaye ni bwana John Wangila Makofi kwa bwana John Wangila um, the board uh, the CEO and members of LAP fund welcome to the report of the Auditor General for the 12 months period ending 30th June 2017. That is, it starts from June 2016 to, I mean, July 2016 to June 2017. And maybe before I present this report, um, I would like to mention that uh, it's complying with the current requirement of reporting whereby we have to include uh, what we call key audit matters in the report. So, report of the Auditor General on local provident fund for the year ended 30th June 2017. Report on the financial statements. Opinion. I have audited the accompanying financial statements of local authority local authorities provident fund set out on pages 1 to 20 which comprise the statement of financial position as at 30th 2017 and the statement of income and expenditure statement of changes in reserves statement of cash flows and a statement of comparative of budget and the actual amounts for the year then ended and a summary of significant accounting policies and other explanatory information in accordance with the provisions of Article 229 of the Constitution of Kenya and Section 35 of the Public Audit Act 2015. I've obtained all the information and explanations with the, which to the best of my knowledge and belief were necessary for the purpose of the audit. In my opinion, except for the effects of the matter described in the other matter section of my report, the financial statements present fairly in all material respects the financial position of local authorities provident fund as at 30th June 2017 and of its financial performance and its cash flows for the year then ended in accordance with international public sector accounting standards accrual basis and con comply with the local authorities provident fund act Cap 271, 271 and the Retirement Benefits Retirement Authority Benefits Act, Authority Act 1997. 1997. In, addition, In addition, as required, as required by, Article by Article 229, 6 of the Constitution, of the Constitution except for the matter described the matter in the other matter section, section of, my report, of my report, I confirm that, I confirm that public, money public money has been has applied, been applied lawfully, lawfully and in an effective, effective. way. Basis for, opinion. Basis for opinion, the audit was conducted audit was in accordance conducted with in the international standards, standards of Supreme of Audit Supreme Institutions, institutions ESAIS. ESAIS. I am independent, I am of, independent local of local authorities provident fund, fund in accordance with ESAI 30 on Court of Ethics. I have fulfilled other ethical responsibilities in accordance with the ESAI and in accordance with other ethical requirements applicable to performing audits of financial statements in Kenya. I believe that the audit evidence I've obtained is sufficient and appropriate to provide a basis for my opinion. Key audit matters. 
key what it matters are those matters that in our professional judgment were of most significance in the audit of the financial statements. Except for the matters described in the other matter section of my report, I have determined that there were no key audit matters to report in the year under review. So the other matter section of the report is as follows. There are two issues are here, two issues here. Uh, that we are putting across for your information. One is on Mariakani Estate, estate Nairobi. Nairobi. Lab funds started Lab collecting started rent collecting from Mariakani estate, estate tenants, estate tenants during, the during the year and review after, after the court case the court was settled was that settled. had been pending for some time. Lab fund is working in partnership with the Nairobi City County Government to ensure all tenants pay rent to the fund and that the recovery of the accrued rent arrears of Kenya shillings 64 million 800 thousand that had been collected by the government is refunded. Number two is on Makasembo Estate Kisumu. The court case concerning the continued collection of rent by National Housing Corporation, NHC, from Makasembo Estate was not yet determined by the court at the end of the year. The National Housing Corporation did not remit the collected rent for the year to lab fund. As in the previous year, rental income of Kenya shillings, 1,452,000, was due from the property during the financial year 2016-2017, but was not received by Lab Fund. The total accrued rent income from the property, which had been earned but not yet received since the transfer of the property by the defunct Kisumu Municipal Council to Lab Funds, to at Kenya shillings, 9,000,000. 75,000 as at 30th June 2017. The defunct Kisumu Municipal Council failed to service and determine debt arising from the construction of the estate houses by National Housing Corporation and thus the recent National Housing Corporation moved in to collect rent to recover the debt. Now, on responsibilities of management and those charged with governance for the financial statements, key to note is the following. Management is responsible for the preparation and fair presentation of these financial statements. In accordance with the international public sector accounting standards accrual basis, and for such internal control as management determines is necessary to enable the preparation of the financial statements that are free from material misstatement, whether due to fraud or error. And also in preparing the financial statements, management is responsible for assessing the fund's ability to continue as a going concern, disclosing as applicable matters related to going concern and using the going concern basis of accounting unless the management either intends to liquidate the fund or to cease operations or have no realistic alternative but to do so. And under the Auditor General's responsibilities for the audit of the financial statements, key to note is the audit objectives are to obtain reasonable assurance about whether the financial statements as a whole are free from material misstatement, whether due to fraud or error and to issue an auditor's report that includes my opinion in accordance with the provisions of Section 48 of the Public Audit Act 2015, and submit the audit report in compliance with Articles 229.7 of the Constitution of Kenya. Reasonable assurance is a high level of assurance, but is not a guarantee that an audit conducted in accordance with ESAIS will always detect a material misstatement when it exists. Misstatements can arise from fraud or error and are considered material if individually or in the aggregate they could reasonably be expected to influence the economic decisions of users taken on the basis of these financial statements. As part of an audit in accordance with ESAIS, I exercise professional judgment and maintain professional skepticism throughout the audit. 
I communicate, I communicate with the management, with the management regarding, among, regarding other matters, among other matters, the planned scope the planned and timing scope and of the audit and significant audit, audit, audit findings, audit including, including any significant audit deficiencies audit in internal control, control that are identified during the audit. I also provide I also management provide management with a statement that I have complied with relevant ethical requirements, ethical requirements regarding independence, regarding independence and communicate with them all relationships and other matters that may reasonably be thought to bear on my independence and where applicable related safeguards members. That is the report of the Auditor General signed by the Auditor General, Mr. Oko. Thank you. Asante sana. Ah, uh, ningependa sasa uh, kumintroduce uh, wanaitwa Sanlam and uh, Britam. Uh, before uh, before Sanlam and, uh, and uh, Britam come, come to make their report, uh, just allow uh, me, just allow me uh, to just uh, inform, uh, you, that, inform um, you that um, in addition to, in addition to the, oversight the oversight by Kenau, who have just read their report, read their report. We, are we are also oversighted and we report. And we, report. We, exist we exist as a state corporation, state corporation under, the treasury. under the National Treasury. And when the and session when chair, session chair Honorable Guyai was introducing, was introducing board members. I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened. And, uh, and uh, he, did he did not introduce a board member, a board member who, sits who sits in our board and she is coming, and she is from, coming the from the National Treasury, but a board member a board in Lafan. I would request Jane Wabogo. Jane, you may stand up. Then I can. Uh, I've taken the liberty to introduce you. The lady over there is in charge of Lafan. Is in the board of Lafan as a as a trustee and represents National Treasury. Thank you very much. Now the MC, you can continue. Asante for that information, Bona CEO. Now I want to call upon Sanlam and uh, Britam. Wakuje wafanya introduction yao. Hello members. Hello members. My name is George name Junge. Is George I'm from Britam. So as you've heard, as part of the service providers, there are two fund managers who manage this fund. I represent Britam, then Dan represents Sanlam, but he will come and introduce himself. So what I'll do is I'll give you a very brief report, mostly about the investment climate, which led to the returns which my fellow co-manager will also inform you about. But before I start, it's always good to clarify who we are as a fund manager. So very quickly and very briefly, what is the role of a fund manager? So what a fund manager does is one, we inform and advise the trustees who you have chosen on the available investment options. We also invest and manage the investments guided by the investment policy statement which the trustees have come up with. So the portion where which Britam and Sanlam invests is mostly, in, mostly invested in fixed income, which is government bonds, treasury bills, corporate bonds, bank deposits and so on. And also in equities, which are also known as shares or stocks. Then, as fund, then, fund, fund managers, we fund also, managers report. also report. Every three months, Every we three report months to the trustees, report to the trustees on the status of the, the funds we are managing and, managing and what has happened in the previous in the three, three months. months. We also we report also on report compliance on to our governing authority, our authority which is the RBA, the, RBA, the Retirement, Retirement Benefit, Benefit Authority. Authority. Benefit Authority. Last, but Last but not least, the fund manager, the fund manager gives the fund, manager gives the fund manager's report, fund manager's report during, during the annual general during meeting, the annual which meeting, we shall now, we shall proceed, now to proceed to do. 
So now moving next, so now moving next uh, let's, go uh, let's go to the economy. economy. So what happened, so what to, happened the to the economy under the period, under the period we, are we are reviewing? So in full year so 2017, year the economy grew by 4.9%, which, which was a bit less than it grew in 2016. In 2016, it grew by 5.9%. So what led to so this? For those who can see what has been put there in graphical there form, in graphical form the green line the is green agricultural line output. output. So if you can remember so towards can remember the end of 2016 end of and in early 2017, 2017, 2017 there was reduced there was agricultural reduced output, output due to drought, due to drought, conditions. drought conditions. So that led so to that led the to overall the decrease in economic, in economic performance. performance. However, However, there was a recovery. Was a recovery. In the, in the second half after june the second half, june, of, 2017, the second half of 2017 there was a recovery in agriculture, recovery in agriculture which agriculture meant that by the end of the year the, of the, the, year, the economic, economic performance was not that bad not in that terms bad. of outlook we outlook expect better performance, better performance in 2018. 2018. So, next, so next on the currency, on the currency so, what happening, so what has been happening to the kenyan, the kenyan currency the kenya shilling. The kenya shilling so the shilling has been stable has been if you look at the graph from the graph all the way from the beginning of january 17 up to the end of 2017. So this has been so mostly, due has to, mostly due to uh, good uh, economic performance, good but also, performance, intervention, but also intervention, by intervention by the central bank the central to make sure our local currency our local is, strong. is strong. So towards the so end of last year, year 2017, last year, and the first and months the first month of 2018, 2018, the currency strengthened. The currency strengthened. So it came from levels of 103, 104 against the dollar to around 101. And this, this was due to a better investment climate after the end of the political end of activities. Political so moving next, so moving next to, inflation. to inflation. Inflation is the general, general rise in prices of goods. Prices of goods. So if you will recall, so I'd say in the first half of last year, of last agricultural, year agricultural, agricultural output was a, output was a bit low. So low. that meant so that, that prices, that of, prices agricultural of agricultural goods, goods prices of foodstuffs food went a bit high. So that so that uh, contributed, uh, contributed to the normal, normal uh, inflation, uh, inflation which led to an, led to an increase in the overall inflation. Overall inflation. However, as I've However, also said, there was, there was a recovery and as you can see from, can the from the graph, that led to a decrease in inflation so that by the end of the year inflation was about 5%. Going forward, we expect inflation to be generally low. So moving next to interest rates, interest rates have also been generally stable. They used to be a bit volatile before 2016, but if you look at from the beginning of 2017 going forward, they have been quite stable. Uh, what you used to measure interest rates is usually the 91-day T-bill, which has been around 8% all that time. So going forward, recently the government cut the central bank rate from 10% to 9.5% in order to make credit more affordable for Kenyans and we expect that will lead to a general although gradual uh, reduction in interest rates. So finally on equities which is uh, what other people call shares or stocks. So if you take a bit of a long term view equities have, have been have been uh, decreasing, decreasing gradually, gradually over the previous, over two, years. The previous two years. If you look at the year 2015 the year and 2016, 2016, 2016, equities had been equities decreasing. Had been. However, in the year 2017, uh, which is just before the end of the financial year under review, which ended uh, June 2017, equities started gradually moving forward. And they have been moving up from about April of 2017 up to present. So this was a general recovery in the value after the drop of the previous two years. And going forward, we expect uh, continued good performance, especially from the blue chip companies, uh, the listed companies in the stock exchange. So thank you very much. I will hand over to my co-fund manager, Dan, to take it from here. All right, thank you.
Uh, my name is uh, Dan Gavogo, and I had, uh, as had been mentioned by George, we are two fund managers for your scheme, Britam, and I represent Sanlam. And just to remind you members, uh, what we do for the scheme is that we manage uh, the assets of the fund that are invested in the stock exchange, and uh, what we call government securities, which essentially is debt by the government. So if we go to the next slide. Lab funds investments, other than property, uh, the fund, as I had mentioned earlier, invests in equities, which is a stock exchange, and government securities. And um, if you look at that table that has been projected, uh, a large majority of the investments of lab fund were invested in government securities. Remember, government securities is debt by the government, and uh, there's a bit of, of certainty when it comes to those returns. Uh, if you look at the blue chart, those are the investments as of, as of the end of 30th June 2017, and um, about about 75 percent was invested in government securities, and these did very well during that period. Uh, we had 25 percent invested in the stock exchange, and for members who've been, been following uh, financial market news, uh, stock exchange performs very well in, good, in in certain periods, and at some other period it does not perform very well. However, I'd like to confirm that for the year ending 30th June 2017. Uh, the stock exchange returns were very good and the fund did well as a, as a result. And the fund really benefited uh, from actually investing in the, in the stock market uh, as a result. If we go to the next slide, which is on the fund performance, uh, this is the actual uh, fund performance of the stock exchange, the investments that had been made in the stock exchange and government securities. For the 12 months to June 2017, the fund performance was 13.2%, which was actually quite good uh, given the tough economic environment that the country experienced in 2017. Remember, we had the extended election hearing period and we had the drought in early 2017. So members, the return was actually quite good for that year, 30th June uh, 2017, at 13.2%. Uh, we were also given an outlook since 30th June 2017 up to March 2018, that is nine months to this current financial year, the fund return has even been better. For those nine months, the fund has returned 14.3%. Again, which points out to good returns for this current uh, financial year. Uh, so I think, members, the key takeaway is that the fund did very well as of 30th June 2017, better than most of other pension funds in the market. And for this year, going to 30th June 2018, the fund is still continuing uh, to do very well. If we go to the next slide. Uh, I'll not spend uh, much, on this, spend slide, much uh, on this slide, but this table basically this shows, table that, uh, shows that the fund, uh, the fund was in compliance with the document called, the, document uh, called, called the trustee called APS the limits that is drawn by the trustees and was also in compliance also with the RBA regulations, the RBA regulations, uh, regulations uh, as of the year 30th June 2017. And finally, and finally uh, as we close uh, as we uh, the fund manager's uh, report, the fund manager's report uh, we'd like uh, to give an outlook like of what we think 2018, 2018 uh, will pan out. Uh, as we've mentioned, as we've mentioned the, the year ending 30th, 20, 30th June 2017 was a good year from an investment point of view. The fund did very well. Going into this year, closing 30th June 2018, as I've mentioned, we've still seen very good performance, and a lot of that performance has been because of the stock market. The stock market has done so far, and we foresee it doing well, and that has heavily aided by the good political climate that we had, especially after the, after the elections were, were, were settled, were settled and, um, and after, and the, after the handshakes that we've, that we've seen so far in 2018. So we expect, so we expect to have another good year in 2018, and we expect, and we expect, we expect that, that the fund will have good positive, good positive performance for the year 2018. For the year 2018. Uh, that uh, that marks the end of our report. Of our report. We'll address, we'll address your, your questions during the Q&A session. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is uh, from uh, Kenya, Kenya Commercial, Commercial Bank, Bank Madam uh, Elizabeth Mwazire. Mwazire, so I think we may put it in a Kama si koronga metoka taveta ama taita. Thank you. Uh, Board of uh, Trustees of Lab Fund and Management, distinguished guests, guests, the regulator RBA, fellow service providers, and honorable members of Lab Fund, good afternoon.
Assalamu alaikum. Uh, my, name my name is again Elizabeth, Elizabeth Mwazige, today representing KCB uh, Bank, who is the custodian of LAP Fund. Uh, uh, my, my report will touch on two items, the role of the custodian, and then I'll move on to give the report to confirm the assets that we are holding for the period that is under review. So the main, of, main function of a custodian is to hold the assets of the retirement benefit scheme and to ensure that at all times that the assets are in safe custody and we also deal with all the administrative matters that relate to the keeping of the assets. So the appointment of the custodian is in compliance with RBA, Acts and Regulations and is also international best practice. Just for members to note that the custodian does not give advice, that is purely the role of the fund managers who have uh, mentioned what they do. Moving on to the services we carry out as we offer the role of the custodian. Um, to begin it, we have safe custody and to confirm that we have all the records and all the documents of title pertaining to the investments that the uh, lab fund uh, holds. Then another key role that we play is transaction settlement. As mentioned, the fund managers decide what they are going to invest as guided by the investment policy statement. So our role is to ensure that once we receive the instructions, then we buy the investments. So if they're buying the government bonds, we'll release the money to central bank. When they're buying the shares, we'll also release the money. When they're buying bank deposits, uh, we'll also release the money to the various banks. We also effect corporate actions where the fund has invested in equities and the dividends are due for payment so the custodian ensures that the dividends come into your account and we also ensure that when the coupons for the government securities are due, that is received into your account. We also carry a role that we refer to as income collection. So when our investments have come to maturity, we collect this principal as well as the income that has arisen out of those investments. We also do activity reporting, and this is a regulatory requirement. So we meet the Board of Trustees, who is the Finance uh, and Investment Committee on a quarterly basis, to just table our report and to show the performance of the fund at that particular moment after the end of the quarter. So I confirm that we have done that in line with the regulations that are in place. And to also confirm that we have all the records for the transactions that we have effected on behalf of the fund. On the custody report, I want to confirm that the assets of the fund were maintained in a segregated account. This is to separate the assets of the bank and those of the pension scheme, and this is under the law. We also confirm that the investments were within the authorized asset classes as guided by the retirement benefits guidelines. We have all the records again, and just to close and to say that the assets detailed in the audited accounts that are read to you by the representative from the Auditor General for the financial year ended 30 June 2017 are in order. And that marks the end of the report. Thank you very much. Bwana Charles Mashira ambaye ataongea kwa niaba ya Retirement Benefits Authority Karibu bwana Mashira Good afternoon everyone Good afternoon Yeah my name is Charles Mashira um, I come from uh, the Retirement Benefits Authority. I think all the previous presenters have talked about RBA. But allow me to just indicate who is RBA and what we do. Um, and to be precise, RBA is uh, the government agency which oversees the retirement benefits industry in Kenya. Um, so I'm glad to be here with you today uh, during this AGM. Uh, I was here last year. And maybe to commend the board for the good work that you've done um, to ensure that you have continued uh, giving back information to your membership on annual basis and on timely basis. Having said that, uh, uh, our chief guest and the board of trustees of uh, uh, LabFAD, the role of RBA is basically to regulate and supervise uh, the retirement benefits of the uh, industry and also to ensure that we afford opportunities for uh, members uh, to enhance uh, their savings uh, in retirement benefit schemes. 
Um, having said so, um, today being a, our AGM, I want to confirm a few things. Uh, one, um, that the Lapford Pension Scheme, or Provident Fund for that matter, is duly registered under the Retirement Benefits Act. And this has been so since the RBA commenced in the year 2000. If it was not registered, I will not be here today. And we also have powers to delegister this scheme in the event that it doesn't uh, operate within the provisions of the law. So today's forum is an affirmation that your scheme is in line and it is in compliance with the law uh, under the Retirement Benefits Act. The second thing is uh, just to confirm to you that in all the other aspects over and above registration, the scheme has remained uh, totally compliant with the provisions in terms of remitting uh, returns, in terms of ensuring they adhere with the law, in terms of ensuring members' benefits are paid on time, among the other things. So I'm glad to be associated with you uh, because I know this is one of the biggest funds that we have. I think it's one of the biggest five funds. Uh, if I'm not wrong, it's the third biggest fund after NSSF and uh, the other scheme. Uh, and therefore, um, I'm glad when I come to your AGM um, and when the Board of Trustees becomes accountable uh, to the membership uh, on an annual basis. Uh, having said that, if I was to make any uh, uh, speech today, I'll only focus myself in the, in the current uh, slide which gives us the position of uh, uh, Lapford. And uh, the graph there is just showing uh, the growth in, term of, in terms of assets uh, of our scheme. Uh, the most important thing, if I could borrow the chairman's word, you talked about the trajectory. And uh, the bitter part of this is a positive trajectory. Everything is going up. Uh, this is very exciting uh, to be at that 1.1 uh, billion uh, Kenya shillings by 2017. But I also have a small problem which is marked in the blue color, and maybe this is a challenge which goes to the Board of Trustees. The question is, um, yes, we are doing very well in terms of growing the FUD, but I'm also concerned, or we are also concerned, that the level of unlimited contributions, the debt arising, uh, from the owing debt is a concern um, to us as RBA and I believe also to the membership of this scheme um, because the reason as to why I was looking at your mission it says you will receive you will prudently invest and you will pay benefits on timely basis three key factors you receive the contributions from the members you prudently invest them and you pay them where, as and when they are due my concern is, are we receiving contributions on time? And what are we doing as a board to ensure that we cure this problem? Second thing is, that debt which continues accruing, what are we done? Because these members uh, who are here with us today, their benefits are based on the contributions they make and the investment income which is earned in the fund. So if we do not get those contributions, and if those contributions are not invested, then they compound our problem because it means we may have a problem at the end in terms of how much will be payable to the retirees once they attain retirement age. We can go to the next slide, please. Um, and therefore, um, as I've indicated, um, if there's anything uh, that concerns the regulator today, I know the board is doing a very good job, but you, are, you have done a commendable job. But I will not exit from this uh, uh, platform before I say we need to, and I hope that the next time we meet here, we will see efforts which are geared towards enhancing the timeliness within which contributions are made. And this is not for the board alone. It is also for, the, for those of us who are on this side as employers, the county governments. Because they are the people who are supposed to be limiting these contributions. What the law says today is that contributions must be submitted within 10 days from the end of the month. The contributions of the month of April should be with the FAD as of Thursday, uh, this week. That's what the law says. But I know and this is a reality on the ground and this is a problem that we have to deal with 
is that we must ensure that those contributions are limited in, t uh, in time. And having said that, um, you know, we call employers in the retirement benefits industry, we call uh, employers sponsors. What I don't want us to do is to associate, you know, the derogatory sponsor with, the, with the, the employers in the county government. Let's do good to what belongs to our members. Let's ensure that those contributions are on time. And let's not do what the general sponsor does out there. The second issue, uh, as I said, is uh, we, do, we, know, we agree we have legacies in terms of the contributions which we are owing, even during the days of the local authorities. But that does not uh, eliminate the debt. I know the board is doing uh, something allowed it. I have seen in your accounts what you are trying to do. Uh, in terms of the penalties and uh, those, that sort of stuff. But the reality on the ground is any amount which will, uh, remains outside the scheme means that the members' benefits are in jeopardy. And we must try and ensure that we do that. We will work in that journey together. Where necessary, we will effect the law to ensure that this small problem that you have uh, is cured uh, going forward. And I say this because uh, for you members, um, if you recognize the benefit statements that you receive every year, reflects what you have contributed and what you have earned in terms of investment income. So if there are no contributions going in or there is a drag in terms of contributions, and CEO, I heard you uh, when you say it's not everybody, but the truth of the matter is there is also a huge number of people who are not remitting, you know, the counties which are not remitting on time. Uh, let's work towards enhancing that so that the members' benefits can be enhanced. And finally, uh, I believe this will also have an impact in terms of reducing the cost of your team following up the employers who are not remitting their contributions uh, on time. We can go to the next slide, please. Uh, having said that, um, I wish to congratulate the board. Um, for what we have shown us today, what you are reflecting uh, to us today, and comparing with where we were last year. I mean, it's commendable to see that we are on a positive path and on a positive uh, trajectory. And recognize that this fund has grown to where it is. I mean, to be at that one billion is not a mean feat. To have 45,000 members, again, is not a mean feat. And therefore, uh, we don't take that for granted and we wish to commend uh, the board. I recognize Mweshimu uh, Aloba Duba because I've known, I've known you from the history of uh, what you did uh, to this fund. And for David to have come and picked it up from there, Wanakoros, uh, I think you're doing a good job. The foundation was right for you. What you're doing is good uh, for this uh, scheme. And I'm happy that uh, the fund has actually gotten out of the baggage of the past to see even the sort of uh, product that you've brought in. I mean, the level of diversification of the service delivery that you're offering to your membership is very commendable. And let me uh, give a special mention to the Lapfad Amal being the first Sharia compliant product uh, in this country. I believe the board has done a very, very good job. And they deserve, the, they deserve a crap, please. The second thing is to recognize that we have a huge population of employees within the county government who are not on permanent and pensionable terms and they are on contractual terms, but accepting to incorporate their gratuities within the Provident Fund. I think that's another very big positive because those gratuities are being enhanced in terms of earning investment returns. And for those of you uh, who have colleagues who are in uh, those contractual arrangements, you should encourage them to put their gratuities to where they belong, where the FADs will earn an investment income. I also take cognizance that you have also in introduced an income drawdown or you're in the process of enhancing uh, the income drawdown facility. I know this is a provident fund where people are paid as a lump sum, but affording them an opportunity where they can withdraw money as and when they require in their retirement life. I think that is a very good thing, um, uh, Chairman of the Board and the team on this side. Um, digitization, I had uh, David uh, telling us to join uh, the Twitter hand of, of uh, Lab Fund. And this is very commendable. I mean, uh, I can only see it in terms of enhancing transparency. You'll like to engage with your membership. You'll like members to give you feedback on a timely basis. 
but remember also digitization is also like musumeno nakata bere kienda na ikirudi nyuma the day things will not be working the day things uh, if members continue seeing unlimited of contributions the musumeno will be going backwards and it will be very hot but uh, i believe you are equal to the task and i think that's why you have put this uh, facility to the membership before i end my comments today uh, please allow me to commend the board that we have never i have not had a complaint from this membership in regard to this scheme um, and i know one of the reasons is because you pay benefits on time but also i also know that being a provident fund once you pay people they go away so we don't have many complainants because the immediately if you don't give them a chance so ladies and gentlemen allow me to invite uh, we are deviating a little bit from our program allow me to invite one of our board members who is also the national chair of the kenya county workers union to come and say a few words then invite the secretary general of the county workers union the nurses union are also here and they can protest. I don't know how the union will handle their issues. It is not for me. Yoni Shauriao. So, Mary, most welcome. Uh, a few minutes, then we go back to the program. Thank you very much, my brother, CEO, the guest of honor of the day the chairman of the board and board members, and all protocol observed. Good afternoon. Why are you so low? Good afternoon. Comrade power. Comrade power. So may I start by thanking all the members for attending this HM. And before I proceed, I want to introduce people I work with. And before I do so, I also want to introduce the members' representation on the board. So board members who represent members, let me see you up. We have four of us. We have my sister, Dr. Sabana from Kakamega. She's from the county government representing the members. My brother, let's appreciate them. My brother, the far end, Mr. Lubuke, from West Pokot, also representing the members. Absent with apology is my brother, Lepo, from Nairobi County, also representing the members. Let us appreciate him in absentia. And also me, I also represent you. So we are the watchdog of the members in the scheme. Now, to proceed, I also want to recognize and appreciate the union officials who have tirelessly worked with the fund. May I start with the water company branches? Let me see you upstanding. The officials, branches, let's appreciate them. Now, from there, I go to county governments, the 47. All officials, let me see you up. Can we appreciate them, comrade power? Now, I go to national executive members. Can I see you up? National executive, let's appreciate them. Thank you so much. Now, before I invite the, the SG from National Union of Nurses, just a quick one for Mr. RBA. These members, the way you see them, are worried because the employer wants to retrench them. So my question is, can you change the rules can you change the rules between Nini the game? You can't. The RBE is here. We want to hear from them. 
because all the 47 counties wants to retrench the members. And these members, they want to retrench, they are targeting a group of people. And the people who, who are being targeted are pen, permanent and pensionable. So, a quick one, I want to hear from Mr. the RBA, so that when we come out of this room, we are all, we are all, it is cleared. So members, a quick one, I also want to, to take this juncture to invite my brother. You know, in union, we don't have boundaries. I want to invite my brother, Seth Panyako, the General Secretary, Union of Nurses. Let's appreciate him. Comrade Power. Comrade Power. Brother, welcome. Thank you, my sister. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Sister Chairperson, Kenya County Government Workers Union. The Chairman, Board of Trustees, Lab Fund. The CEO, Lab Fund. My brother, Robert Duba, General Secretary, Count Government Workers Union, RBA representatives, all protocol observed. Members, you know you are the lab fund, you who are seated there. Solidarity! Forever. Solidarity! Forever. Thank you very much. Before I say something, I want to take this opportunity uh, to introduce all my officials who are here from different counties. All Kenya National Union of Nurses officials from all the counties stand and wave where you are. Thank you very much. That's a strong, strong representative from the branches. In the national office, I have Brother Oiko. Can you stand assistant chairman, national? May you sit. I have Brother Damon Kwara from Coast here, who is the tribute uh, organized national organizing secretary. I have Brother Henry Adolua, the chief trustee, is here with us. And lastly, but not least, I have the Iron Lady, Madam Agnes Wangeshi Munderi, the national treasurer. So we are strongly represented in this gathering and that should show you the commitment and the trust that we have in lab fund management as a pension scheme for count government the choice pension scheme not just a pension scheme this is the only pension scheme for count government employees if you are somewhere else you are in trouble kama huko mahali ngine mahali wameweka scheme iko na mikumingi mikono sijui nini you are in trouble this is the pension scheme of choice for current government employees. Hakuna ingine. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, as a union, we will continue to support organizations and institutions that demonstrate respect, protection, and empowerment of our members. We will continue to support organizations and institutions that demonstrate sound administration policies and principles. We will respect and support institutions that support workers' corporate representation in the administrative structures. And to this end, Lab Fund made these qualities. I know that the current board of trustees is about to expire and my advice to government and of course the board of trustees uh, the administration is that as you constitute the next board of trustees you will have to adhere and respect the retirement benefit authority act guidelines so that all workers feel properly represented. They are properly represented. But the Nurses Union has come in with a membership of 28,000. And we want to make sure that all nurses belong to this scheme of choice. We want to assure the CEO of Lab Fund that we as a union, we are supporting the establishment of county government retirement 
pension scheme number 10 of 2018 sponsored by the ministry of treasure specifically minister of treasure because this scheme this bill if it is enacted to become an act of parliament it will bring the administrative structures of the two schemes as the ceo has said so that we can enjoy from economies of scales when you have too many people managing your funds you lose a lot because they take away your money because they have so many people depending on your money therefore the returns at the end of the year will go to these many 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 managers we want to have one scheme that manages our money i'm a member of lab, Star, lab fund i contribute to lab fund and that is why i trust in lab fund in the issue of non-remedance of detected pension money from workers i have spoken with brother robert duba that in this hall we only have two unions the nurses union and the county government workers union when they deduct your money and they don't remit that money you don't make any income on the money that has not been remitted i am requesting brother robert tuba to stand with me we come up with a committee between your union and lab fund and the nurses union to fight for the right of these workers so that any county government any county government that is deducting your money and sleeping on it must remit that money and if we put our efforts together and we speak with one voice that money will go to your pension scheme and that is what we are going to do lastly ladies and gentlemen we must put our hands together this union robert duba and the doctors union must come on board so that we fight two things one casualization in fact three things one casualization two contractualization where a contract is not tenable you cannot give a contract to a worker for work that is not going to end tomorrow that work that will continue until jesus comes back if indeed he's coming back we must fight that one the last thing that we must fight is where they want to send home the poor working kenyans who work day and night to move the will of this country ahead home so that the few with the big stomachs can become rich by earning huge amount of money we must fight retrenchment <laughs> love found oil. 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 solidarity asande namungo barik let's appreciate him thank you thank you very much members now i want to welcome the Honorable Rupa Duba, and before I do so, before I do so, now before I do so, may I welcome the Kayamba for one stanza to welcome the General Secretary. They are not there. So if they are not there, so let's up. May I take this juncture to welcome the National General Secretary of Kenya County Government Workers Union. Now, it's a tough job, eh? Either I go pension or I get trade union. I don't know which one. <laughs> Both of them are available. Which one do I go? Both. <laughs> anyway, um, the session of chair of today's AGM for our great Honorable Lab Fund, the board members, the CEO, a great friend of mine, and the person I've worked with when I was the CEO myself, he was then in fund management and finance, he was a great advisor, Dugu Koros. His staff that I began with, people who have really, I get so much pleased. This morning I found them in uniform, very happy family. And you kept them well, I'm very happy about uh, the staff also. 
my fellow trade unionists and people from branches, my brother Seth Panyako, thank you very much for outlining some few things which, he had, which we had talked about in the boardroom so far. You took them out, which is good. And the honorable members and the stakeholders, good afternoon. Good afternoon again. Salamu alaikum. Hamjambo. Asante sana, thank you very much. I'll be very brief because I think comments have been made here and by inausisha mambo mengi ambaye nilikuwa katika ilikuwa zilikuwa katika mawazo zangu. I want to mention just three things because we have other things to do. People are going to travel and we wish them well. One is that former local authorities whose successor is now the counties were the original owners of both the two schemes within this area of occupation. One was lab trust, the other one was lab fund. Are we together? It's very important for members to listen to me just briefly. It's important you understand. These funds were kept separate. Lab trust was registered in 1929. It was not for you. The natives were excluded. It was meant for the Mzungu. It was called senior officers, local government senior officers superannuation fund. At the Gina, it was a fault. Lab trust in the Gina, The natives were locked out. When there was clamor for independence, including our founding father, Jomo Kenyatta, they are the ones who said, where is the pension for the natives? Kwa mu Africa, kwa wa nainti, kwa So in 1960, three years before independence, this fund, was registered. Piwale to Kata for the natives. That is you and I. That is the interesting history. But let me share something with you. Upon independence in 1963, there was no justification. After independence, it should have been, it should have been merged. It was Piwa Green. It was irresponsibility to have kept them apart. Hapakwa na sababu yote. While I served as a club fund, we moved a motion to bring these funds together. And my brother Koros, I'm very happy. I handed over to him minutes, minutes initiated by myself as the CEO of this fund to merge. But that merger was frustrated by many dynamics. I don't want to blame a particular person or group. But dynamics are not nyingi. Ile ngine ilkuwa commitment zake pia ni nyingi muno. This one was very straight because it was a parastato, it was auditor general. It had, the path was uh, narrow and straight. It was narrow and straight path. The other one had many issues, including the beneficiaries Wale walikuwa nalipwa, wengine walikuwa bando, wanaishi huko gambo. Because it was for the elite, the white class. So many dynamics ikawa imeumana, mambo ya maja ikawa ngumu. Pa, paka waleo bado tunasunguzia. It's very unfortunate. Ukiona mambo ya naendelea kwa wingi, ambayo ina lete mzozo, ni kwa sababu sisi tuliachilia. Tukasema kila mtu wa compete. Lab fund compete. Lab trust compete. Shori yako. God for us all, everybody for himself. Is this the right way to manage the pension? No. So we have to blame ourselves. First culprit, ya kwanza, ni treasury. Imechelewa kulete ibil ambayo imeletu wa sasa. RBA, my brother, well, who was the speaker? It's a great guy. Thank you very much. You know it. We moved this motion. Wakati unawacha watu wazozane, watafanya mambo mengi. My brother Kili, sai le pressure na kuwa mingi ata ya menda kutafuta memba sata Sudan. Kwa sababu wa mekazwa sana. You know this is the problem. This is... Hawa nae lazimu wa pambani. Ama na mnagani? Because tuliachilia waende kushindana. Na mashindano ina garama, ina shida. You know I want to be telling you the truth. I like speaking straight. If you like, like cowboys, I shoot from the hip. That is the way to do it. Ukitako kweli. Kwa hivyo, 
both fans are good fans. Haina ubaya. Haina ubaya. Ni yenu. Half of the people who are not here are in lap trust. Don't say lap trust is bad. Never say this is bad. I know what this is. This is classic fun. Classic. So ni jukumu letu sisi sote. Kushikana na kulete hii pamoja. Right now, there are four bills in parliament. In fact, there are not three. Four bills on RBA. Na hii jukumu ni sharti njini muundoke mchukue pamoja na treasury. So that hii maja iwe ni maja ya kisawa. Na kwa sababu njini mulisema kuna defined benefit anymore. If everybody is now to go define contribution. Ni kuakikisha kwamba hii maja haita dhuru mtu yote. Including board members. Ukisema unafanya maja na unambia board members waende waende wapi. Unafikiri watakubali? Watakubali? Awezi? Uambia ile board members apande ile ngine wapote. We want a maja that takes care of staff, board members, and our honorable CEOs pia. Wote wachungu. Ili mutu wasione hii maja inafanya apote. Ati inafaidi huyu na huyu anapata asara. That is the way to do it. And I'm sure that way is coming. What I want to tell you members, the honorable members, ata wale hawako hapa wajue, ya kwamba ni wajibu yetu kushikana, na tumeunda committee, ili waendele na lap trust na lap fund, tuakikisha ya kwamba kumaji kwa hizi two funds, itakuwa ni ya faida ya kila mutu. So that nobody loses. Are we together to this extent, my brothers? Tuko pamoja? Iwe ni maja kisawa, ambaye inafaidi kila mutu, na inafaidi inchi na membership. We must also agree to change. They say the only permanent thing is change. Kwele ya wongo? Change is obvious. You are no longer what you are yesterday. Ata sisi wenyewe. Ata mimi likuwa tafauti jana jioni. Because that day is already gone. So change must be accepted. And we work together, uh, Bwana CEO, with your board, to angelie hii bill, haswa the bill from treasury, so that we can form a basis for our discussion. Tuone. Ata hii bill, lazima kuna ata nyinyu, kuna maneno mengi unataka kuangalia kwa hiyo bill. So members involve, tuko na committee kutoka union, chukua committee ata kutoka my brother, uh, ata union lile ngine. Let's go through, so that the product of the bill, Matokeo ya hii maja bill ni ya kusaidia everybody. And nobody loses and our money does not get lost. That is one bit. The second one is debts. Deni. I go back to RBA. RBA, it is part of your money to help these people. Deni outstanding is too much. You have the instruments of power, legal power to force the employer to pay this money. If you give the CEO the support, right now, this brother, Koros, Nandugu Yango Kili Pia, Akuna Mojao na is a Chukua employer yote kotini ili alipe. Do you know why? Because they are competing. When the competition is there, Kila Mutu and Awoga, Ukifinya Nairobi City, and by Leo Ikona, 12 billion, billion, upon a million, outstanding. Na isitoshe, wanaongea ujangili ati wanataka rentrench mutu. Watu, how? Pesa yangu enyewe ya haki, huja tiarisha, na unasema unarentrench mutu. Mr. Lebo is not here today. Where is it? This is completely... <laughs> Ini masumuzwa inagani. You keep my debt, haki yangu, nguvu zangu zote umezitumia. You have drained my power. My power part of it is saved in the pension. Pension nenyewe deni hujalipa. Alafu unakuja kusema unataka kurentrench wa 12-3. Iyo unazangia mutu wakili? Unazangia mutu wakili? Hakuna. Tuseme hakuna. Hakuna. Yes, that is finished. Ata istore mutu talete. I'm telling you it will be the hottest thing. So we want to get our money. First, unataka kuongea mambo rentrenchment, abolition of office, Inability to pay, you want to discuss severance, redundancies, 
All those things, after all, they are negotiable. But before we negotiate anything to do with that, pay pension iwe tiariable. That is the condition I want to give you. It is not even possible to talk to anybody like that. And I want, you know how they do it. The counties, they try here. They tell one county, try. Ukifaulu sisi sote to endele. Ukishindwa tutajaribu marangine mungu wa kitujalia. You know that's how they work. We must reject it round one. Sawa sawa. Ili wasipate fursa ya kulete yoshida. Now, I have talked about the committee that will work with you. We will give you all the support. In my view, because it's the government now waking up, Treasury is waking up, in my view, we'll use that bill. Mina jua bill moja ni enu. Moja sujui mbengapi ya kili. Iko bill mingi hapa inachezu wa karata na mnai. You know, we want to, we want to use ili ya treasury kama basis ya kuanza kuongea. Because it is the government, they are the ones pushing it. And it's their responsibility. Na RBA pia tusaidie sana. RBA, I want to put this responsibility on your shoulders mainly. Because the act of 1997, the RBA law, a regulation 2000 gives you all the powers. You have been sleeping also. This thing must be done. And I'm happy with it. <laughs> Finally, I am, I am finishing. Finally, I want to really thank you. Hawa, let me tell you. I want, I should have said this. Whenever I speak about these two funds, I make Two declarations. One, declaration of Kwamba, I was once the CEO of this fund. It's important to say before you start. So that what you can talk up and say, oh, Kumbi Alkwa na ongea na mnae kwa sababu Alkwa CEO ya ifan. So I always want to start, start by saying I was once a CEO of this fund. Tumepatana. I want you to know, brethren, brothers and sisters, I was once the CEO of this fund. So do I know about it or I don't know? Kweli. This fund has grown. It has done wonders. Unfortunately, it has been under the watchful eye of government, the Auditor General, the Inspector General of State Corporations, and all the usual, you know, strings and shackles of government so that it is not misused. This fund is healthy. I give you a clean bill of health. Tick! And the the other one we have resolved, the resolution must come from the merger of the two bills so that we have one unit, so that everybody is happy at the end of that merger. I have said it. Okay, thank you very much. Final, I want to plead. During AGMs, try to sponsor as many people as possible. It, it's not a wasted money. Let many members come. Kwa sababu naona wengi bae wako very passionate, wanataa kuja, hawa kuwai. Counties nae wengine ni, governors wengine, you know how they work, eh? eh? Ini shifter, some of them, I don't know how they work. Eh? Mimi na shindwa na mambo zao. So, do not, do not let these workers suffer their hands. I love training. Tafadali side is easy training. Other members wait to wengi. How are famu? They don't understand the dynamics. We will be ready. Opas is it ready? So that we go from one county to county and I because Kwanza Tumbia me kama resource person. Sata kama ulipi kidogo tuta. Final, my brother Panyako. Wapi? Samama Ju is my junior. Who you took a Kongea? This is for the unions. Who you took a Kongea? Dr. Oluga wa doctors, you know, took a Kongea. To me, sema unions in public sector. Unions ambay inausisha ama inausika na mambo ya fanyakazi katika idara ya uma. Ni sharti tu shikani. Because the government is chaotic. Sirikali imeanza muenendo ambaye ya kikatili haina huruma. Tuliongea and I'm very happy. We have agreed. Hata kama ni kunda ambrela fulani ya kueka pressure ya kutosha. 
Where I apply pressure this side, Panyako that side, doctors that side, Sutuna Faulu. So we are also thinking about it. Let's cooperate. Let's enhance our only tool, which is solidarity. Kwelea Wongo. Without solidarity, we cannot work. Can we say solidarity? Solidarity. God bless you. Thank you very much for listening to me, my brother Panyako. Thank you. We'll pass you our goal. Asante sana, Jyoto. Good. Thank you, Secretary General, or the Honorable Robert Duba. You know, uh, politicians who are microphone, now mere mortals like us, we don't know what to say next. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, allow us, we've come to the very end. I want us to be upstanding as we welcome uh, the speaker, the chief guest for today, who also happens to be the chairman of County Assemblies Forum and the speaker for Kajado County Assembly, the Honorable Johnson Osoy, who will make a speech on behalf of the main chief guest, who was the Honorable Speaker for the Senate, Ken Lusaka. Karibu Mweshima Osoy. Makofi. Aya, Asanteni, Ketini. Asante Buana Koros. I'll be very brief, so those of you who are stepping out, please uh, accord us five minutes or ten at most, and we will be done. I am here wearing a couple of capes. One, I am the Speaker of Kajiado County Assembly. Secondly, I am the chairperson of County Assemblies Forum. And thirdly, I am here to represent the chief guest, uh, Senator Kenneth Lusaka, the Speaker of the Senate of the Republic of Kenya. And before I read his speech, because he has a written speech which I am tasked to read on his behalf, um, I wish to recognize um, distinguished guests who are here, uh, the chairperson of the trustees, board of trustees, Lewis Nguyai, the CEO of Lab Fund, and your staff, the honorable speakers of county assemblies here present, my colleagues, I have only noted two of them are here, the CEC is present, uh, led by the representative of the governor of uh, Mombasa County, the CEOs, uh, various boards, county assembly service boards. I note that we have a number of county assembly service boards, county public service boards, MCAs, Honorable MCAs who are here, led by majority party leaders, minority leaders, deputy speakers, uh, leaders of the trade unions who have just spoken, and your officials. Um, I think it is unfair to ask a speaker to speak after trade unions have spoken, because the speakership is a political. So Lusaka and I are not politicians. I wish to reiterate, and the board of trustees are aware of this through the speaker, uh, through the CEO, the commitment of county assemblies as the chairperson of county assemblies forum in working with Lab Fund. We have a very, very cordial relationship, and I wish right from the onset to thank Lab Fund for uh, a good working relationship. You are actually the platinum sponsors of the upcoming legislative summit of the uh, assemblies of Kenya, which is in two weeks away, two weeks from now. We thank you. I wish to give you our confirmation that County Assemblies Forum uh, will continue working with you. 41 out of our 47 assemblies 
are actually keeping their gratuity with Lab Fund. So we are here with you. Having made those remarks, allow me, ladies and gentlemen, to read the speech of the chief guest, the Honorable Kenneth Lusaka, who uh, was supposed to be here today, but he has been asked to join His Excellency the President in launching uh, tree planting, and so he sends you your gre his greetings. And um, you can be sure on the high table today, I listened very carefully to the, to the MC, and he said, Ukiona wale wame vaa koti, na tuko Mombasa ujue wametoka nyanza. Kwa hiyo mimi na Lewis Nguyai ndio tumetoka nyanza peke yetu, hapa. <laughs> na walipo sema nyanza wasimame ni lishanga maana hawajava koti. Kwa hiyo mimi ni mjaluo kutoka kajiado. Ama mkisi kutoka kajiado. I also note that uh, when the CEO was speaking, and he spoke about uh, the group life product, group life insurance. I saw some of you, mulikuwa kwa simuzenu kwa calculator, mukiangalia hiyo ni helangapi. Kwa ni unataka kwenda araka? Iyo utapata siku ile baada ya kuondoka duniani. Lakini pesa watu wakisikia wanaanza ku, kuangalia. Um, your Excellencies, Governors and Deputy Governors present, I'm reading the speech of the Chief Guest. The Chief Executive Officer of the Retirement Benefits Authority, or the Representative Chairman of CAF, County Assembly Speakers, Clerks of County Assemblies present, CCs and CEOs present, General Secretary of Kenya County Government's Workers' Union, Honorable Roba Duba, the Secretary uh, General of the Kenya National Union of Nurses, Mr. Seth Panyako, Lab Fund Board of Trustees, led by my friend Honorable Lewis Nguyai, the Chief Executive Officer Lab Fund, Mr. David Koros, all sponsors and members present, distinguished Guests, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. This is Kenneth Lusaka speaking now. First, let me thank you. I'm slightly taller with more gray hair, but uh, I think I fit the bill. First, let me thank Lamfund Board of Trustees for inviting me to grace this occasion as the chief guest. Lamfund has done very well in discharging its mandate as enshrined in law establishing the fund. Members and sponsors have witnessed this good job. In the last, in the year 2010, Kenya promulgated a new constitution where a new devolved system of government was ushered in. Now in its sixth year, and it must be troubling most of you why your retirement scheme is still carrying the tag local authorities. I am aware of the work the board management and various stakeholders have put in place to ensure lab fund is transitioned to comply with the devolved government system in line with the recommendations of the presidential task force on parastatal reforms as well as the commission on the implementation of the constitution ladies and gentlemen i want to assure you that the senate is ready to provide legislative support to the county governments, Council of Governors, County Assemblies Forum, the National Treasury, to ensure the retirement scheme for counties, county employees is transitioned properly and soundly anchored in an act of parliament to ensure to continue protecting employees' benefits. Count on the Senate on this. Social protection is a key pillar of the Vision 2030, and government has placed a lot of emphasis on saving for retirement. In Kenya, the penetration level for pension is below 20%. This means that over 80% of our population has no plans for retirement. This is a worrying trend and must be reversed. I want to encourage all county governments to ensure that all their employees have joined a legally recognized retirement scheme 
and start saving. I was privileged to serve as the first governor of the great county of Bungoma, and I know the importance of saving. I am aware that our county assemblies are taking retirement planning for MCAs and staff very seriously. Lab Fund Board and Management, you are at advantage position to advise government on how to increase penetration and coverage of retirement planning across all sectors in the, in the economy. I urge you to increase your presence in all counties, research and develop a variety of retirement products that can suit different categories of Kenyans. I am happy you have commenced work on product diversification. As mentioned by the chairman of the board, I applaud you on the recent launch of Love Fund Amai, Amal, a Sharia compliant product with marks, which marks the beginning of many more products. Ladies and gentlemen, I also want to take this opportunity to mention the President's Big Four uh, legacy projects. Lab Fund should consider partnering with county governments in development of affordable housing units and selling them at affordable prices to contribute to realization of one limb of the Big Four government agenda that is housing. Besides making a return for the members, it will also accord them an opportunity to own homes or houses. I know you face challenges of unremitted contributions owed to you by the defunct local authorities and some county governments running into billions. This will be a thing of the past in the coming days after Parliament enacts new law. However, it's important for all the human resource managers in all organizations, including counties, to ensure that all statutory deduction, deductions are remitted timely. I call upon the regulatory body, RBA, and the National Treasury to enforce the available sanctions to ensure that employers who are not compliant with retirement payments of its staff uh, uh, there are sanctions placed on them. Ladies and gentlemen, since Love Fund is a scheme for counties and Senate is concerned with matters counties, the Senate will give unwavering legislative support to ensure that county employees' welfare is well taken care of. Finally, let me again thank Love Fund for demonstrating in all its operations that excellent customer service is paramount for any organization keen on growth. Keep it up there. Don't allow anything to bring you down. To management and staff, innovation is the newest way to excellence. Don't be left behind. To members, keep on saving. The end will be sweet and secure. Lastly, the representative of the Treasury is here. I am aware that one of the biggest challenges faced by county governments is this remittance is a ripple effect. The Treasury rarely, if at all, honors requisitions on time to county governments. I wish to call upon the Treasury to hasten with the Office of the Controller of Budget to ensure that there are no delays because there are counties today that are still on the March, others are in the February requisition, has not been approved. So we ask the Treasury and the control of budget to ensure that those delays are gotten rid of, and that way we will be able to remit um, employees' uh, contributions timely. Thank you for listening to me. God bless you. God bless Lab Fund and God bless Kenya. Thank you. Uh, Bona Chief Guest, just before you sit down, uh, in recognition of your contribution today and your presence.
Lab Fund has a uh, work on a special gift they want to give to you. Thank you very much. Wow. I hope I'm a bigger picture. I'll be telling Lusaka to be sending me around. Yes. <laughs> and you keep the gift. Yes. The gift you Anasema kwamba atakuwa kiambia Lusaka kuwa kimtuma all the time. Ladies and gentlemen, we are now on our last item on the program, which is uh, questions and answers. I would like to request the lab fund team that is uh, distributing the mics. We want to pick the set of five, and I'll request the lab fund managers who are here, uh, Mr. Jaldesa. Uh, Veronica and Mr. Mbogo to take note of the questions. So we'll pick the first set of five from here going this way. So you lift up your hand. Someone with a mic will come, ask your question clearly, and then the next set of five will be picked from here to this side. So let us start with this side. Your hands up, please. Anyone with a mic to move close? Please wait, members. Those ones who are leaving. Mic. The mic. Yes, there's someone there. You say your name, and then you ask your question. And then those ones who will not be able to ask their questions, please write them down and hand them over to us. We'll be able to answer them. Give us your contacts, your email address, your address, and then we will send them to you. We'll send the answers to you. So please go. Go on. I am Kerade Mwagi. Branch Secretary, Kenya County Government Workers Union, Muranga Branch. My question is to the board. What are you doing to comply with the with the His Excellencies, the President Uhuru Kenyatta's directive that members, our members' retirement pension dues are not taxed? Thank you. Good. Second question, there, there are more hands up here. The first set of five. Yes. Yes, my name is uh, Stephen Masini Kideka. Please be loud so that uh, your name is captured. My name is uh, Stephen Masini Kideka, Chairman oh, Kipi yeah, Kaun, yeah. Kaun Government Workers Union. My question goes to the bond. They have said in the minutes that each count should have an office. But Kitui, we don't have. So we request one to be brought in Kitui. The other one question goes to the board. The board. They have told us some counties are not limiting their, their money. And they have, they have claimed that the local authority did not pay their money in time. By the, by the time we were for my local authorities. We, they used to write a letter to the government so that they issue the lot of money. Why are they now claiming that the local authorities are being owed? Thank you. Good. Uh, just ask one question, please, because of time. Komajina naitwa Abdallah Kombo, Mombasa Water. Mimi ni County Government Workers Union, Mombasa Water Branch. Swala langu likona mnaii. 
na ninaulizia RBA RBA na fira unanipata hapo sisi wafanyikazi wa Mombasa Water kuna wale ambao walikuwa National Water Pension Scheme na wakaja kwa LAP fund pesa zimebakia huko kuna wengine tulikuwa LAP trust tukaingia LAP fund pesa zimebakia huko je yeah, hiyo pesa itakuja namna gani very good two more questions to go on this side there's a hand down there and we are here to get a question from a lady okay my name is uh, Madeka Joseph from Kirinyaga County my question goes to the CEO kindly next the time publish the way the counties are performing not only to mention to us this county and this and this county publish them on the report this is how they are performing such that when the members or the union leaders go to their counties they will go and know to this time the remittances have not been done thank you one more question on this side the final one kutoka naitwa christine songa no christine wait i'm saying wait. this from here i'm picking the first set of five you wait for you will be number one this side nimepewa ruhusa na mkubwa pale okay please go ahead <laughs> okay yangu hata sio swali but ni request ama ninataka kuongea kwa niaba ya members kule nyuma nikitoka wananituma wengi wananiulizia eh, ya kwamba saa zingine members can be on suspension for so long na they have their money with the lap fund so they were wondering if RBA inaweza peana ka kapengele fulani ili member anaweza saidiwa na pesa yake kidogo asiumie maishani ambapo hiyo pesa labda saa zingine atakufa bila kuiguza na watu wengine wakuje kuiharibu alafu ya mwisho maybe AGM huwa ya members na sasa members wanakuwa represented na union tunaomba union iwe ina, ina, inapewa nafasi kubwa kidogo ku represent members wao those are my questions i'm christine songa from kakamega county very good thank you the final question on this end yes thank you so much my name is simon konocho from west pokot county uh, working with the kenya national union of nurses as a branch secretary my question uh, goes to the rba uh, since devolution there are those staff who are seconded to the counties and their retirement benefits have not been put clear what what is being done towards this so that as they come to the contributory scheme they know first what is happening with whatever was meant for them before uh, the other concern will be commending the step that the ceo mentioned about uh, uh, putting on uh, digitalizing the, the the statement so that we can get them as fast as they are remitted please can you fast track this thank you uh so we want to move to this side we want when we answer all the questions we close so um, the mics on this side we are picking five four more so okay okay please go ahead kwa majina ni Samuel Mugweru eh ya good recommendation tu nilikuwa nataka kuongea kuhusu mambo ya the general secretary has stated about the manja na ni jambo mzuri lakini nataka kusema hivi hakuna vile unaweza fuga shui na mbuzi kwa nyumba moja so it's good vile general secretary amesema iangaliwe sahihi kama tunaenda kufuga buzi yetu ambayo ndio lafad tunaifuga dani moja ya sizi na shui shui itakula eh kwa hivyo mikakati ipangwe lafad waendelee vile tupo na tumbe sema thank you very much kwa lafad bahali imetufikisha asante sana thank you uh... 
I can see one hand, uh, the far end. Yes. Okay. Thank you, uh, Mr. Kubasu. Uh, my name is Frederick Odinga, Sea County Executive Secretary, uh, Kenya County Government Workers Union. I asked a simple question last year at this place, and the question was this. What makes it difficult for you to compare the statements of Love Fund with that of uh, NSSF such that when it comes to members, you actually identify which month you missed or your employer missed in remitting, because currently as it is, we have statements whereby the whole contributions for last year is missing in a number of statements for workers. What makes it difficult for you to compare the statements such that it is easy for identification? Uh, two more questions. Uh, in the middle there, I can see a hand from a, a lady. Uh, my name is Awahida Omar Mohammed from Mombasa County Government. My concern is uh, Lab Trust and Lab Fund, as spoken earlier, needs to be merged, but it has to go to the, to the Parliament for further tabling. But um, during the pension now, once you receive, in Lab Fund you get the lump sum, and the other fund you get... Uh, uh, a percentage and then you get monthly pension scheme so once you merge what is the way forward thank you uh, George please the, bring it to this gentleman from Kilifi uh, he benefits because he's my friend here this, this one here from Kenya National Union of Nurses yes Thank you, Mr. Kubasu. My name is Sokato Evans. I'm the branch secretary, Kenya National Union of Nurses, Kilifi County. My question was from the statement from the CEO, and it's all about the subscription. From the presentation, she, he told us that the members' subscription, including the county government subscription, some counties are not remitting. So my question is, what will be the implication, especially on retirement, if by that time your man has not been subscribed? Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, let me call upon uh, Lab Fund uh, Management, uh, led by the CEO, Veronica, to answer those ones before we forget. If time allows, we will be able to take another set of five. So let us first of all answer what we have, what, what we have picked first. Olianga, just be patient. I'm picking another set of five. So just be patient. Let us answer what we have picked. Veronica, welcome. Uh, let me help uh, Veronica answer quite a number of them, and then uh, she will pick up those I have left and then try and answer. First question, what were we doing to comply with the directive of the president about taxes uh, of pension, or rather that uh, pensions should not be taxed? One, the answer is, taxation of benefits are there under the Income Tax Act. And I'm not aware, I think that member, I'm sorry, uh, there is uh, a very favorable regime of taxation of pensions. When you are contributing, you are, your contribution up to a maximum of 20,000 shillings per month is tax-free. So that one, it's not taxed when you are contributing everywhere, before they apply taxes on your pay slip, they remove your contributions, you get a tax relief of up to 20,000 shillings if you are saving in a pension scheme. So uh, again, on retirement, you get 60,000 shillings per year tax-free. So depending on the number of years you have worked. So really, I don't think, and I'm not aware, of any presidential directive towards that the issue of taxes apart from the law that is there. 
Then the second question, uh, we are not in Kitui. I think the gentleman from Kitui was concerned. I've just said it's our intention to be in every county, each of the 47 counties, and we are coming. So give us some time, be patient, we'll get there. Uh, the, the third question was, why not use the same formula we used to you apply under Latif? Uh, my answer to that, it came from this side. We now operate under a slightly different regime. We used to have CAF 265. Now we have counties. And we have what we call share of revenue. Each county, the constitution provides for allocation from the national revenues to counties. Nobody is allowed. It's a law. The money that belongs to counties can only be expended by counties in their budget. They no longer come to get clearance to use their money. Unlike in the previous dispensation when you used to have county assemblies, count local authorities, who used to get clearance before they get Latif. We no longer have that provision in law. And the lawyers will tell you that. Um, Abdallah from Mombasa, I think I leave that question to RBA. Mashira, you need to pick that. The issue of transfers. From Mageta, he requires, he's requesting that we publish performance of counties. I think that's a very good suggestion. Those we will have will be able, if we have time, we'll be able to run on a page or two how counties are performing. That one, I think. It's an improvement we'll include in our reports in the subsequent years. Um, RBA, you will answer the issue of uh, um, uh, members uh, to open up, to allow members to access benefits. I think, Mashira, you picked that when they are not in retirement. Um, I think uh, the issue of the union, I think it was the same member who asked that issue of the union that we need to have a greater uh, inclusion of membership or other involvement. Of, we need to have more people from the union. The same request has been made by the SG. We'll walk into that. We believe in having a cordial relationship, which we are building with all the stakeholders, not only the union. But since the union have made that request, we'll look into it. Uh, Simon of West Pocot. Uh, you've said um, that's for RBA. RBA, you look at that issue of Simon. Then the issue of dig digitization uh, and the request was whether we could uh, make it faster. We are on it, and uh, sooner rather than later, you will, we will be operating on a digital platform, all of us. Um, Mugweru was just um, a comment, uh, and I believe it was well said. Uh, Odinga, comparison of uh, LaFant's statement with NSSF. I would like to say that, um, yes, I know you get statements from NSF, and we get statements from LaFant. Let me say, statements from each of the two organizations is specific to you. So there's no way LaFant would say, or would ask NSF, give us statements for individual X. Then we compare with what we have. I believe that one can be done at the member's individual level. When you get your two statements, you can compare. And then through the unions and whatever mechanisms that you have in counties, you can, you can raise it. Uh, I believe um, that answers um, uh, Wandia, uh, no, uh, Odinga's from CIA question. Wadi Waida from Omar Mohammed. Uh, I leave that to RBA. Uh, the issue of merger of pension and provident, where one is paying lump sum, one is paying periodic payments and a fraction. And when you merge, what happens? But what I know is the intention is, Mashida will clarify, the intention is each of the schemes will run independent. That's how pensions operate. The assets will never, never come together. Even if we match the institutions, the assets can never be brought together. Each institution will run on its own, and, or rather each unit will run on its own and pay benefits 
uh, as promised to the member. So when the member retires, you go to a section which formerly was Love Fund or which was Love Fund and get your lump sum if you are a member of a lump sum. So uh, RBA would clarify how that would work. But I, again, I would like to say those are moda modalities will be worked out to see how how this uh, how that uh, system will be operationalized. But remember, a law has to be first and foremost be in place before you think of those things. And the law or the regulations there under shall provide mechanisms in which the act will be operationalized. Um, there was something on uh, implication on retirement. I didn't get it well. Veron Veronica, you can pick that one. Are there any other questions? Veronica, the, the questions that are there are for RBA. Mashira, you can come up here. Yes, 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 indeed. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, thank you, CEO. I have a couple of questions, but I'll start with a question from uh, Maimuna. And this is a question which was brought, uh, it was not pronounced on the floor, but it was brought uh, because she noted somewhere. And the question was, there's an issue or propaganda that uh, they, they have increased the time for retirement from age 60 to 65 years. Um, I'm glad Maimuna used the word propaganda because uh, I'm not aware of where retirement age has been changed from age 60 to 65. And uh, from the government side of issues, uh, there is no policy whatsoever uh, geared towards enhancing retirement age to age 65. So for now, we can treat it as propaganda, uh, the retirement age is uh, 60, uh, so to speak. The second question is from uh, Evans. Manilila from um, Bugoma and his question is um, in regard to transfer of benefits from Labcrust to Labford and vice versa um, and I think this is a question which has been asked uh, on a couple of occasions we as RBA did um, advise the two schemes a couple of years ago that we will not allow for the transfers from Labcrust to Labford and that was because the scheme which was from Labcrust was a defined benefit scheme and uh, Labford has always operated as a defined contribution scheme. The reality on the ground is once a member uh, transfers money from a defined benefit scheme, when they have not attained retirement age, they are ultimate losers because um, when your benefit is being determined by Labcrust, uh, being a defined benefit scheme, it means they have to get the discounted values, the present value of your benefit. And therefore, strictly speaking, anybody moving from Labcrust to Labford, the DB scheme to Labford, would be a loser. That, that's the truth of the matter. And the vice versa, anybody transferring money from Labford to Labcrust, the defined benefit scheme, it's also a loser. That's, that's the truth of the matter. So to safeguard your benefits, we did guide that uh, we, there should be a cessation of any transfers from a defined benefit scheme to a defined contribution scheme because members may not know the actual losses that uh, will incur by moving from a defined contribution scheme to a defined benefit scheme. It's a, it's a fairly technical issue, but it is the right thing to do. Now, when it comes to transfers from Labford to uh, the Lab Trust umbrella, the defined contribution scheme, that one should be automatic. Um, the movement from uh, Labford to Lab Trust umbrella retirement benefit scheme, which is a defined contribution scheme, or vice versa, I think the law is very clear. It says when a member says they want to transfer their money, those funds should be transferred within a maximum of 60 days. So if the question from uh, Evans is in regard to transfers from Lab Trust, Abrera, Retirement Benefit Scheme, or whatever they call CPF, to Labford or vice versa, that should be allowable and it should happen within 60 days. But when it comes to the DB scheme, there's a technical issue, and our desire is that no member should lose because of transferring scheme, uh, money from one scheme to the other 
when you don't actually, nobody explains the fundamentals or the issues uh, ingrained uh, therein. Uh, the third question I have is from, uh, I think, uh, Abdallah. It relates to transfer of benefits from, I think Abdallah used to work for National Water Corporation, then went to Lab Trust, then uh, now is in Labford. And Ab Abdallah, unfortunately, I, I don't envy your position because uh, National Water Corporation used to learn or runs a defined benefit scheme. Lab Trust is a defined benefit scheme. And now you are in a defined contribution scheme in the name of Labford. I think, uh, to be honest, I think uh, it would be very difficult for me to respond to your question on the floor. Uh, we may need some more details to assist you um, on the problem that you have here. So I will request uh, Abdallah, because I think your question is very specific, that uh, you please look for me and I should be able to pick it up as an issue to address uh, moving forward. The, third, the fourth question is on devolved government uh, workers. I want to believe it's uh, employees from the central government who are in the devolved units and what is their status in terms of their retirement benefits. Um, one thing is very clear, the national government did give uh, a concession that all staff who are uh, transferred to the devolved units, their benefits will continue accruing in the civil service pension scheme until such time when the county government workers uh, have a scheme of their choice. And in fact, this is a serious problem. It's not a problem for county government. It's a problem for the national government because what is happening is by virtue of us deferring the period of having a scheme in place, whatever you've been discussing here about the bills and everything, Forget about the emotional issues about the stakeholders and other things, but the reality on the ground is that the national government is accruing huge liabilities in regard to the employees who are in the devolved uh, governments. The problem is not on the member. When the member attains retirement age, they will access their benefits and they are secured and the government has given a commitment to that. But on the other side, uh, and I think that's why Treasury is driving the bill in Parliament, the reason uh, is that the national government is incurring a huge liability of people who are earning a salary somewhere else who should be contributing there and there should be a cessation of when their pension rights uh, continue to accrue. So for now, I think for the members, it is a cure. On the side of government, I think there's a serious problem that, and it needs to be cured and cured uh, very urgently. Uh, there's another question about uh, members who work uh, in county governments and uh, somewhere down the line they get suspensions or they are not in service. And therefore the request is, can we relax the regulations under the RBA Act to allow them to access benefits uh, during these hard times when they are not in employment? Um, unfortunately the answer is no. Um, the law says you can only access benefits if you are not in the services of your employer. As long as there's a relationship between you and your employer, whether you're in suspension or otherwise, then you cannot access the benefits until you attain retirement age. Please remember, these benefits are supposed to cater for you once you're not economically active, once you are not able to feed for yourself, once you are no longer having a job. So to the extent of us relaxing that provision, I think uh, my answer would be to the contrary. It should be, in fact, we should cross and let people save for retirement and only access money when they, they attain retirement age. So unfortunately for now, uh, there is no widow to allow for access of benefits when uh, members' benefits are, I mean, members are in, have been suspended or are not in uh, active service of their employers. I think those are the questions that had been uh, uh, wired to me. I know Madam Mukongoro asked me to talk about uh, retrenchment and counter government and RBA's position on this, but the question was not very clear. So maybe once we take the second round of contributions, I'll consult her and then I can be able to respond to the specific questions she wanted me to respond to. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you. I think uh, we are now uh, coming to the end of the program. Uh, najua watu wengi wamekuwa hapa na wangependa kupata chakula cha mchana. Lab Fund has organized for some lunch for you. It's a five star lunch. Sema five star. Yes, five star 
lunch. Now, the majority of you, you've already give, uh, received your uh, vouchers. Lakini kuna dignitaries. Wale ambao meka hapa mbele na wachache ambao wako hapa. Mtaona a beautiful lady called uh, Jane. I don't know. Jane, you can uh, wave your hand wherever you are. Jane, she will direct you exactly where you go. Ameva Ameva uniform flani. Yeah. Ameva namna iyo. Yes. Jane will come here. She will show you exactly where you're supposed to go. Now, I want to call upon... Uh, is it Pastor or uh, Mr. Oyo? Martin, please come and uh, say prayers for the food. Thank you. Uh, before prayers, I wish to give a vote of thanks, first of all, to the Almighty God for favoring us with the good weather. Uh, it has been raining for the past couple of weeks, but today he has favored us with good weather and enabled us to complete this uh, AGM successfully. I would also want to thank the chief guest, Honorable Soy, for finding time to come and uh, grace the occasion. Our CEO, uh, Mr. David Koros, uh, LAPFA and the Board of Trustees. Um, we have members uh, from the county government unions and union of nurses. want to say thank you for finding time to grace this occasion. And also to all members of LAP Fund for finding time to come and grace this occasion. And also want to thank White Sands Hotel uh, for giving us the venue to, part to undertake this exercise. And also other service providers whom we've contacted. We want to say a big thank you for realizing the success of this event. Without much ado, we wish to stand so that we close with a word of prayer. Let's pray. Almighty God, we come before you this afternoon. We want to say thank you for giving us this opportunity to gather here at White Sands Hotel for the 10th annual general meeting. Thank you so much, Lord. We started well in the morning and we are finished well. We want to say thank you. Thank you for the safe journey masses you've accorded our members. Thank you, even as they return back to their destinations, you are going to bless them, Lord. You also want to say thank you for the board of trustees, the chief guests, for finding time to be here, including the representatives of unions. We want to say thank you, Lord. We cover them with your blood, Lord. You are going to see them through whatever they do, Lord, to the glory and honor of your name. Thank you, Father, even for the issues we've discussed. Thank you, Father, for the areas of improvement you are going to grant us as lab fund secretariat and we believe father come the next agm the 11th it will be successful thank you father even as we depart and also as we take our lunch we bless it oh lord for this prayer we ask through jesus christ our lord Amen.